Hello everyone! Thank you for joining. It's me, Matt. I hope you're great wherever you are. Give me a yes or a thumbs up or something in the comments if you can hear me okay. And if you can see me. Yes, okay, you can you can hear me and you can see me. Okay, all good. Hello, Eva. Hello, Mary. Hello, Yesim. Maybe I'm not pronouncing that right, but thank you all for coming. Okay, so I'm going to do a little presentation that I'm excited about, and then I'll come back onto the screen and I'll teach you all a song. And at the end, I will open it up to questions. So thank you so much for joining me. And let's get started. Okay, here we go. Let me bring the slides back up here. Okay, and I'm going to just do this. Okay, so welcome to my webinar. How to teach songs to young learners. An introduction to my preschool songs with Matt online course. Oh, you're driving. Wow, consiglia. Be careful. But thanks for joining. Thanks for listening. So why do we use songs to teach English? Well, there are many reasons. I use songs because I love music. So I think that it's a great way to teach. And songs help children learn vocabulary, pronunciation, and the rhythm of language. So when we're using songs to teach English, we're really learning a lot of different things, or the students are learning a lot of different things, maybe the teachers too. And songs are fun. For me, mostly songs are fun. So it's a great thing to have fun while you're teaching students English, and the students are going to have fun as well. Today in one of my classes, we sang a couple of songs in a row, and at first the students were kind of not moving around so well and not interacting, but by the second or third time, they were all really sung, they were really enjoying themselves. This is me singing in Spain many years ago. Songs with actions are great because children learn vocabulary better when it is associated with an action. So when you're teaching vocabulary, it's great if you're using flashcards to use an action with it, show an action with it. And also when you're teaching and singing songs, it's great to use actions. Say yes in the comments if you use songs in your classes. Hello, Anna, thanks for joining us. Okay, great. Oh, every day, okay, great. Me too, pretty much every class I use songs. Okay, great, so you're already using songs. Hello, Margaret, okay, great. So how do I teach a song? Oh, you're using my songs. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's wonderful. Uh, so how do I teach a song? I teach songs using what I call the one, two, three, go method. The one, two, three, go method. One, I pre-teach the vocabulary. For example, if it's a number song, just teach the numbers one through 10. Next, add the actions and teach the song with the actions and vocabulary, no music yet. So I just wanna go back. So it's important, I think, to first, I said earlier about teaching actions when you teach vocabulary, but I think it's also important first to just focus on the vocabulary and teaching the pronunciation, then next you can add the actions and teach the songs with the actions and vocabulary. And go. Now you sing the song with the students and the music. 
say yes in the comments if you enjoy singing with your students. Okay, good. Yes, great. Because I have heard some people say, oh, I'm not a great singer, and so it's not so fun. They feel self-conscious. But great, sounds like you all enjoy singing with your students. That's really important because if you're having fun, then the students are going to have fun. If you're relaxed and enjoying the class, then the students will relax and enjoy the class. Okay, now I'm going to teach you the weather song and I'm going to do this how I teach it in my classes. Okay, so I'm going to come back. Camera on. Okay. Okay, so I'm back. So I'm going to teach you. Oh, thank you, Anna. You know the weather song. Okay, great. So the first thing I would do with my students is maybe I would show them the card and I would say, what's this? How's the weather? And then I would teach them sunny. So first, only vocabulary, sunny. These are clouds, so it's cloudy, cloudy. Great job. And of course, I want the students to repeat. Rainy, rainy. What's this? It's snow. Snowy, snowy. So even if my students can't understand things yet, like what's this? It's snow. I still will say it anyways, so they get used to hearing English. Then next time I'll go back and I'll say, sunny and then do some action so the weather song i do sunny like this just wave the hand sunny cloudy and we make a cloud cloudy of course it helps if you can put these on a board or something rainy rainy snowy snowy okay so I've gone through and I've taught the actions. I'm doing this pretty quickly. I would take more time with young learners. And then I might teach the vocabulary first. How's the weather? How's the weather? Okay. And then I might teach the action. How's the weather? How's the weather? Just bumped into something here. Okay. How's the weather? And hopefully the students will repeat. And then maybe one more time I'll say, it's sunny, it's cloudy, it's rainy, it's snowy. If you know uh, the original video, I do snow like this, like throwing snow. But recently I've changed to doing the sign language for snow. Okay, so I'm going to sing the weather song. And if you want, you can sing along with me. Okay, so I've done the three steps. I taught the vocabulary, then I taught the actions, and now, oh, actually, I'm missing a step. We would sing the song. How's the weather? How's the weather? It's sunny, 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 okay? And the other actions, of course, are up, 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 and down, down, down. Okay, so here we go. Let's do the weather song. I'll just do about half of the song. Everybody still with me? Up, 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 up. The rain comes down, 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 down. How's the weather? How's the weather? It's sunny, 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 sunny. How's the weather? 
How's the weather? It's cloudy. Cloudy. Maybe do a big cloud. Cloudy. Cloudy. And the sun comes up, 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 up. Go as high as possible. Up, 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 up. And the rain comes down, 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 down. How's the weather? How's the weather? Okay, do any of you use that song in your classes? Say yes in the comments if you do. Okay, great. Okay, go back to the slides here. Okay, good. It's very fun and simple, and the kids really love this part, the up, 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 down, 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 down. Okay, thank you, that's great. So as you can probably see, I'm much more relaxed and comfortable when I'm singing a song than talking. So that's another reason I use a lot of songs in my classes. Okay. All right, so my songs and videos are available, you probably know, on youtube.com slash dreamenglishkids and the dreamenglish.com um, website. So you can download, the weather song is on there as well, um, and it's also on the Dream English Kids. Oh, thank you, my soft voice, oh, that's nice. Nice to hear. So I also want to tell you about my new online course that I put up. It's called the Preschool English Songs with Matt. It has 17 song-based lessons, keywords, learn it, and sing it videos for each lesson, 54 videos, 17 mp3s and all the videos and songs can be downloaded for offline use it's very simple easy to use and follow and there's no advertising or searching for the right video or deciding what song to teach next and it's the songs i use most in my classes it has, as you can see here, numbers, song, colors, ABCs, weather, body parts, action, daily routines, animals, shapes, hello song, good morning song, good afternoon song, goodbye song, wheels on the bus, bingo, five little monkeys, open, shut them, and basic questions. So these are really the songs I use most in my preschool classes. Uh, let me let me just show you a little bit from the class uh, from the course if you don't mind. Okay, so the first thing we're going to show is the keywords video. So each video has or each lesson has a pronunciation video. So let me just show you the first one. Let's practice the keywords for the song. Repeat after me. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Five. five. Okay, so that's the keywords. So for example, for the colors video, it uh, will have red, yellow, pink, green, okay? Then there's a learn it. So this is kind of like we were okay. just talking about. Okay, are one. you ready to learn? Let's count one to 10. Here we go. First, we're gonna put our hands like this and we're gonna count. One, two, three, four, five. 
then jump. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jump. Great job. Okay, so that's the Learn It video. And Margaret, I see your um, comment. It'd be great if I find time to make some videos in British English. Wow, that would be a little tough for me. Um, that's a good suggestion. Maybe I could have someone else help me with that, but I'm not really familiar with the British accent, but I can understand why that would be valuable. Uh, okay, so I'm going to show you the last kind of video, which is the Sing It. Are you ready to yeah, sing a song? For a minute. And pretty Great. soon we'll get to the questions. Great. Here we go. Here <laughs> we go. One, two, three, four, five. Jump. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jump. One, two, three, four, five. Jump. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that's the let's count one to ten lesson. Do any of you use uh, the let's count one to ten song in your classes? Say yes in the comments. Okay, great. I did that song today with my students. Oh, his favorite song? Oh, that's so nice to hear. Yeah, it's always fun. I think the jumping makes that very fun. Okay, so you can try a, a lesson for free at school.dreamenglish.com. So this course actually costs money. There's a one-time fee. Oh, okay, I just want to read the comments too. Oh, use that a, a warm-up song? Great. Your students like the song. I'm, ha I'm so happy to hear that. It's very fun. It's fun and simple. It's fun and simple. I think that's why it works well. So the course you can actually try for free. If you go to this link, you can do the number song that we just did. So you can try the keywords and you can try the um, learn it lesson and the sing it for free and I recommend maybe try it with your students. Uh, see see what they like it and even if you decide not to get the course that's fine but if you want to give me some feedback on how it worked or, or what could be better that'd be great too but you can always use that as a resource. I'm going to leave that up there for free and then and then you can see the whole course and how it has uh, keyword pronunciation videos and uh, learn it and the sing it for all the songs. So I think it's kind of fun. And if you put yes in at, at the checkout, you can get a discount, 20% uh, off. So I'm just gonna put that here. Yes, discount code. Whoop. Having trouble typing here, okay. Alrighty. Okay, so now we're at the questions part of the webinar. That went by pretty fast, but um, I'm happy to answer any questions either about the course, about teaching English to young learners, uh, anything you might have. And actually, since I have you here, if you don't mind, I'm going to show you I have some books now, which I'm super excited about. Have any of you seen these books yet? Either online or maybe on a Facebook or Instagram post, or I guess if you're on my email list, thank you for being part of that. I've emailed about it. Um, this book is My First 100 Words with Matt, and it's a vocabulary book, and I'm making videos for all these chapters. 
And I've already made audio, which you can listen to for all the chapters. But it covers. Oh wow! Oh Mary, okay. Are you are you the one who just commented today on Facebook? Family. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Anyways, there was another Mary that commented that they got "Can I Eat It" on Facebook. Well, thank you so much for purchasing it. So that's that book, Actions. So I'm very excited about this. I'm going to be using this with my students, the preschool students. So my goal is for them to learn 100 words within a year or so. And this is. Oh, great. You ordered one. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Eva. Can I eat it? So this is a very simple book. You can teach like this. Look, it's a banana. Can I eat it? Yes, I can. Yummy. I always do actions like that. Look, it is a crayon. Can I eat it? No, I cannot. Yucky. So the kids really enjoy saying that. No, I cannot. And yummy things like that. Okay. So, um, does anybody have any questions? It can be about Dream English, lesson planning, teaching young learners, discipline, anything. Um, to get started, I can answer some questions that people have asked me about the online course. If um, one question I get is, do you have to do the course in order? And the answer is no, you do not. You can go out of order. You can make it fit whatever curriculum you're using. So for example, if you like number of songs, maybe I use almost every class. So I might do that every class and then maybe if animals is my topic that month, then I'll use the animal song and the animals video from the course. So you can kind of jump and skip around as you go. Okay, any questions? So uh, maybe I'll ask you all questions. What ages of students are you teaching? If you can give me an idea. Don't be shy. Uh, three to four year olds. Okay, great. So these kinds of songs with a lot of actions are perfect for that age group. Uh, three to 15 year olds. It's hard to sing as they get older, right? The probably from 12 on up. Um, five to seven. Okay. So how to structure a lesson? Um, Margaret, that's a great question. I'm going to say this and I'm going to type it in here. So I would do, I would start with greetings and warm up. Now I always start the class by saying, hello, hello. So if it's morning, good morning, good morning. And I always start classes like this. Clap your hands, clap, clap, clap. Wash your hands, wash, wash, wash. And then the students repeat after me. Shake your hands, shake, shake, shake. Brush your teeth, brush, brush, brush. Comb your hair, comb, comb, comb. So I start with that and the students are very used to it because I do it every time and they get really good at it. So sometimes you can vary it. So I do something like that. And then two, I would do a warm up song. So the warm up song can be anything. For example, you can do the one, two, three, four, five, jump. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jump. So for a warm up song, I like to do a song that the students already know, they're already familiar with. So maybe I'll review. For example, if we're going to do the let's count one to 10, I might go one, two, three, four, five, and we count to 10. 
and then we do the song. Or if I'm going to do head, shoulders, knees, and toes, I like to stick with simple songs like that for warm-ups. So after that, I would do a warm-up song. Then I would either do weather, probably weather or numbers. And I would review the vocabulary. Um, writing letters, you can start with as young as, th I think, three years old. You might have to guide them a little bit. I mean, it really depends on your class. Um, so if you have time, like in my smaller classes, if it's five to six, eight kids, we'll do something like the above and maybe some book reading um, and then some basic questions. What's your name? How old are you? And then maybe some ABC practice. And then I will settle them down and we'll do a little bit of writing with um, some writing books. For my bigger classes, if it's 30 kids in the class, 25, 30 kids in the class, we don't do any writing because there's just not time and it's just hard. I can't go around and check everybody's writing. So Margaret, it really depends on the size of your class, but I think you can start pretty young. I hope that's a little bit helpful. As far as lesson planning, I have, um, let me see. If I can find this real quick, just going to look because it, it's there's a lot to lesson planning. Um, and I think I maybe have a podcast with some lesson planning on it. Mm -hmm. Huh, beginner lesson. Check this page out, Margaret and everybody. I have a podcast. Actually, there's one with Richard Graham from Genki English, if you don't know him. He talks about lesson planning. Um, and if you go down the list a little bit, there's beginner lesson ideas, Halloween lesson plans. There's, there's a lot in there on lesson planning. I also have a book. Let me share with you. One second here. Okay, so I'm going to share this book with you. Ten steps to teach English. Okay, so this is a book. And in the book, I cover lesson planning, materials, worksheet, uh, use worksheets, where to get flashcards, how to plan your lesson, how to teach songs. So um, if you want to, it's something that I recommend checking out. I think it, it could be very helpful. So if there aren't any, are there any more questions before I go? I'd like to keep this in 30 minutes. I know everybody's pretty busy. Any last questions? She uses all from 10 and up. Yeah. Um, so, Margaret, I think you just have to try and experiment with, um, with lessons, especially I think you said you're teaching three to four years old. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. You know, some kids will pay attention, some kids won't. And some kids will pay a lot of attention for six months and then they won't for three months and they will again. And other kids won't pay attention for six months and then all of a sudden they're doing everything in the lesson. So you just have to do the best job you can do as a teacher and your students' attention, especially at those young ages, is gonna come in and come out.
Um, oh, you're very welcome. And I just want to, Katharina, Katharina, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that. Lessons to use with older children from 10 and up. I still use songs for ages 10 and up, but I do a lot more with conversation and questions and reading. So um, a little bit less with kind of activities and, and a little bit more of trying to get them to do a self-introduction, like, hello, my name is, I'm 10 years old, I live in whatever country, I like pizza, I can play the guitar, and things like that to just get them conversing a little bit more. And also card games, matching games, go fish. My students who are like 11 and 12, they love to play go fish, if you know that. So, um, well, you're very welcome. A anybody, if you have any questions that, that you think about later, you can feel free to email me and I, I can answer. I'm happy to answer. So I'm gonna just real quickly sing the goodbye song. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friend. Goodbye, goodbye, I have fun today. I have fun today. I have fun today. And I always do this. One, two. Goodbye. See you. Thank you. Goodbye. So thank you all so much. Thank you for your for your kind wishes. Oh, I'm glad it's helpful. And you know, and like I said, email me with any questions. I know this was very brief and very quick. So if there's any way I can help you in the future, please feel free to get in touch. Okay, everybody, thank you so much. Goodbye, goodbye, Eva, goodbye, Mary, goodbye, Anna, goodbye, Susanna, goodbye, Katrina. And thank you all so much. Take care, and I hope to see you again either in a webinar or maybe real life one day, okay? All right, take care. See you. Goodbye.